Hello and welcome back to tutorial 111. Uh, this is part two of the video and uh, if you've not seen part one then I suggest that you do because uh, this will build upon some of the things that I covered in part one of the video. So uh, what we're going to be looking at again are these trend lines and part two is a slightly more efficient pro program that calculates the uh, summation of the volume in all the bars that are encompassed by a specific trend line. Okay, so let's go to the program and uh, program two. Most of it is very similar, but there are some differences. And uh, the first thing that we're going to look at, because in this particular case, what we're going to be using is the, uh, the, the click event of the actual trend line. So again, just to give you an idea how you can see that functionality, if you go to toolbox and you may or you may not see trend line included, if you don't, if you right click on this bar here and say choose items then make sure that trend line is selected in other words that you've got a little tick in the box and if it is you can then double click on trend line make sure it's selected then go to properties click on the little lightning and then for the click double click and then you're going to see the sort of the syntax that we're basically going to be using we're going to be using this method, which is the trend line click. And also if we go to the designer generated code, you can see some of the syntax. We're not going to be using all of this, but you can see basically how you set it up to um, declare as a variable the, the trend line, to instantiate the, the trend line, and and then here the event. Make sure that we've got this event in place which is going to be the thing that's going to make when we click something happen so go back to two we did we're not actually going to be using that because we're copying it into our program so i'm just going to delete that and I'm going to delete this and i'll just show you some of the differences of uh, what we're going to do so let's go back to the top Hopefully, hopefully you're going to recognize a lot of this. The, the charting host piece looks uh, very similar. But uh, now we have, we're going to be using this charting host chart element click um, event. And in this particular case, this is when the, the mouse up occurs on the charting host. We're going to be doing some additional checks. And uh, what we're going to say is if the... Uh, the click is caused uh, is on a chart visual element type dot drawing object. Then we're going to check if the, there is a trend line stored in TL clicked. We'll be coming to that in a moment. In other words, it's not null. And the actual drawing object visual element that's been clicked is a trend line. And we do that using this uh, this syntax dot name is a trend line then we run our method now you'll notice that I've changed the method in this case because now we're actually inputting the trend line object into the method and we're processing that in the previous um, program we didn't we didn't um, put anything into the method we just run it as it as it were straight uh, without an input but in this case there is an input which is the the trend line object so we'll look at that again in a moment as we go down and then what we're going to do is we know again the list of all the objects but we're going to be trying to work out whether a trend line has just been added to the chart and one way we can do that is we can compare the count with a variable that I've set up in which we store the count. So if there is a discrepancy, then we know that uh, something has been added to the chart and uh, a trend line has been added to the chart. And then what we can do is we can add the click event for the new trend line and that's using the syntax that we just looked at a moment ago. It looks a bit more complicated, but only because we're using this um, this variable here where we have the new tick count 
and um, we're saying the list, which is the trend line in the vector as type trend line. And we've got that in brackets, then dot click, and we add the event. The other thing that we're going to do is set the tag to null. And then finally, we're going to do, we're going to apply the calcfold method to this new trend line. And then because we did the, um, the comparison between the TL counter, we do need to update the TL counter. And we do that here where we set the TL counter to be list count now. TL counter, if we look up at the variables, is an intrabar persist variable. Okay, so that is on a charting host. Uh, click and testing to see if a trend line has been added to the chart. And if so, going through applying the click event to the new trend line, setting the tag to null, and then uh, applying the, the method. So let's just have a look at the method because this has changed now to uh, have an input. And the input is a trend line, which I've just called T line. Apart from that, is not too dissimilar from before, uh, except I'd built in some of the stuff around going through the list of trend lines in the vector inside the method. Now we do that outside the method and we don't need to do that actually because we're working on specific, most of the time, specific trend lines as they are applied to the chart, apart from at the very beginning. So I think most of this code will be familiar to you. The other thing that I've included here are some components of a print statement, which are just simply um, including some text to uh, provide details of the, the starting point and the position of the start of the trend line and the end point. Okay, so I think most of that is quite similar, except uh, this time I've added a little bit of a uh, little bit more formatting for the text label. I've added the font and I've added a color. Apart from uh, persist is the same. V style is zero, and we just add that to the chart as before and set the trend line tag as before. Okay, so let's just go and have a look what happens when the trend line is actually clicked. Again, this is some code that we just looked at. By, if you remember when we looked on the uh, toolbox, press trend, trend line, we generated some of this code and um, this is basically the same apart from the names are slightly different. So what we've got here is um, we're storing the trend line that was clicked into TL clicked. We get that from the sender, sender as type trend line, which we get from here in this, uh, in this method, which the format for which is already set up for us. And then again, we go through the list of all the uh, the trend lines in the vector and we go through and see um, try and work out which of those trend lines is the one that was clicked remember we know the one that was clicked here we call it TL clicked that's from the sender but we don't know where it is in our vector so what I've said is if this trend line in the vector is equal to that then we do we apply the method for that particular trend line and then finally, we do the, the thing that we did before, but again, this is slightly modified. Once all the bars have been loaded on the chart, then we run this part of the program just once. And essentially we go through, this is when it first applied to the chart. We, go, we, we put all the trend lines in a list, all the trend lines that are on the chart at the moment. Remember, we will be adding more as we go along, but we go through that list, go through each trend line object in turn, and we apply the event, the trend line click event, as, as we did previously higher up in the program. We also set the tag to null, just in case there are any um, stray values stored in, in the tags. And then finally, we do a calc vol. We apply the method to each trend line in turn. And this is just when we um, apply it to the chart for the first time. And if, uh, if all that has been done correctly, we should have something that looks a little bit like this. 
and you can see also for this particular trend line I've got the labels applied which provides additional information about that trend line. Okay I know I went through that very quickly but I think if you look at the previous video uh, in conjunction with this one hopefully it will make a bit more sense and also the programs have got comments so you can um, hopefully they will try and explain them a little bit more. Okay thank you.